Good morning. Welcome to Harmony. Would you stand up with us this morning? We are going to proclaim the power of Jesus' name this morning. We have a lot of things to do. We're going to hear for a little bit about the Guatemala trip. It's just going to be a great day here in Harmony. So let's sing about the power of Jesus' name. Sing with me right here. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. He chose him.
How awesome is that? Last Sunday morning, we worshiped those that were in Guatemala on the missions team. We worshiped literally with people from many nations around the world. There was people there from America, obviously, Canada, other countries, and those that were from Guatemala that were in that service. And it was an awesome time uh, to gather and worship together. And guess what? One day, uh, we are going to all worship Christ together and every tribe every nation every tongue is going to to, to be there uh, and that's going to be an awesome thing but until that time comes we have the responsibility to let uh, the nations know who Jesus is and uh, I'm excited that you're here this week uh, we are thrilled to gather and worship here uh, in Avon Indiana and again it's amazing to think that people are worshiping the same Savior all over the world in different languages uh, different uh, circumstances and communities but they are gathering uh, to praise the name of Jesus and that's what we came together to do today and I want to thank you for being here and being a part of our service today when you came in you received a, a welcome guide a bulletin uh, and uh, here's what I would love for you to do I would love for you to uh, take a look through it uh, sometime during the service uh, at the bottom there's a place where you can uh, fill out some information detach that place that in the offering plate when it comes by a little bit later in the service if you have some prayer requests uh, some needs that we can help with. We would love to be able to pray with you uh, and for you about some of those things that are taking place. So if you could help us with that, uh, we would appreciate it. Remember, uh, instead of filling out the form on this bulletin, you can go online, you can download our app. Uh, it's available in the App Store or, or Google Play, and you can fill out that connection card uh, that way. And uh, it would be a help to us, and uh, it would allow us to better serve you. So if you can help us with that, uh, we would appreciate it. Well, March is, is here. There's a lot of things that are going to be taking place uh, throughout the month of March, and we've got some exciting things uh, that are going to be unfolding in the next couple of weeks uh, that we're going to be sending out emails this week telling you some different things about it. But we're coming up on our 30th anniversary, uh, and we're going to celebrate uh, those 30 years, and we're going to give you some ways to participate uh, in what we believe God's going to do in the next few years here at Harmony, and we're trusting him uh, to do great and mighty things that only he can do. So we're going to be sharing some of those things in the next couple of weeks. Today we're kicking off a new series in just a few moments about big faith. God is not looking for perfect people. He's not looking for people that have every answer, but he is looking for people who will say, look, here's what I'll do. I'll believe you and I'll trust you and I'll do what you ask me to do. And when we put that combination together, God can do some absolutely incredible things. So for the next a uh, little bit today, we've got two more songs we're going to sing. We're going to hear some details about the mission trip, uh, and then we're going to share more of that uh, with you next week, uh, as well as we talk about big faith and relationships and how God uses those in, in a way to make a difference in our lives uh, in many circumstances, in many situations. Uh, today, I want to ask you to pray for a couple of uh, different things. W one of the things I, I want to ask you today uh, to help me celebrate right now is Ray Brewer is celebrating his 85th birthday today. That is an awesome thing. And uh, what wasn't that long ago, we weren't sure whether you'd be here to celebrate that 85th birthday. Uh, and uh, you are, and uh, we are, are thrilled uh, with that. I want to ask you to uh, pray for the Nugent family. Uh, Karina is out in uh, Washington. Her father is in uh, very bad uh, health, and uh, they need our prayers. Uh, and uh, Brian is here with us today. Uh, pray for him. Pray for the family. Uh, and, and, and it is a situation where an absolute miracle is needed, and uh, they'll be meeting tomorrow to make some decisions. I want to ask you to pray for the Nugent family uh, and, and, and all that they have uh, going on there, that God would just be with them uh, and uh, take care of them and bless them during this time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you today, and, and Lord, while we're gathering here, people from every, every walk of the earth, life, they're gathering in other places. Father, some have heavy hearts here today. Some are facing impossible situations. But Father, we know that the impossible becomes possible with you. So Lord, as we gather here today, and as some are on top of the world because they've experienced an incredible week, some are, are dealing with battles uh, that they never thought they would face at this point in their life, and uh, God, your help is needed. So Father, no matter where people are at on that spectrum, I ask you to be with them. And Father, I ask you specifically for the Nugent family today that you would be with Karina, that you would strengthen her, and uh, God, give her the grace that only you can give. Lord, I pray that you would be with Brian and, and the children as he's been taking care of them here while she's there. And Father, most of all, I would ask you that if you're going to work in a miraculous way, that you would do it and do it quickly. And Father, you are the great physician.
position and you are able to do all things, uh, but God, regardless of what you allow to happen, I pray that you'll give grace and strength and trust no matter what. Father, help us to realize that our hope is in you. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that you gave a team this week to take that very hope to Guatemala and to share from the campus of Hope of Life, to be able to go into the villages of Los Canan and La Union and interact with other people, and Father, to show your love and to demonstrate faith that you are the hope and that you are the answer. Father, bless us today, but most importantly, help us to bless you. For it's in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, Ben, stand with us one more time this morning as we just sing about the hope that John has told us about. Do you have a hope? Yes, you do. And we have plenty to sing and praise his name for this morning. Yeah. 
is your hope this morning. I hope you can sing this from the heart this morning. All my hope is in Jesus. Sing with me right here. I've been held by the Savior. prodigal return. Sing it out now. today we want to celebrate some of the things that have taken place this week some things that maybe you didn't get to experience firsthand but some things definitely uh, that you had a part in uh, this week at hope of life in uh, guatemala and zacapa uh, we were able to gather with people from literally all over the world and go out and minister uh, and there were groups there from canada united states di different uh, countries uh, but this video is, is rolling and I want you to take a look at it and uh, just check out what we were able to accomplish this week in Guatemala. A beautiful story is being written as we speak. Guatemala is being restored to how it used to be, the land of the eternal spring, a place of wonders, a country filled with beautiful people, people that will soothe your heart, people that will bring joy and purpose to your life as you bring hope and hope to theirs. My name is Carlos, um, same thing, we are coming from Canada, and this has been such a great experience for us. I think that the most important part of the ministry is to go to the communities and to have a connection with the locals and to have a great relationship with them. We love the ministry, we love the work that you've been doing here at Hope for Life, and uh, especially the serving and supporting the small communities, going to see the churches and go to the the new houses and the schools has been a blessing for us. So we are so happy, so excited, and we invited you to come back as many times as you can 
because this is such a great way to serve God. Thank you so much. God bless. What we came here was actually to build greenhouses. Um, but it's so much more than just building. It is um, getting to know the people of Guatemala. What does Guatemala mean to me? It means love, care, and family. And I think that we can all be family in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're uh, Stride Contracting, <laughs> and this is Dryden Block, 70 Block. And I'm Lucas Thiessen and my wife, Christy. And we are very excited to be here. We're from Saskatchewan, uh, Canada. So up, up in the cold, we're out enjoying the heat here. And uh, we are um, we are very excited to be here. What we've been, we've been here a day so far, and it's been a phenomenal experience. We have uh, we've seen the different ways that hope of life um, not only touches lives but saves lives and changes them, transforms them. And we want our company and our people to be part of this in the future, and we're very excited about that. I really didn't know what hope was before I came to this place, and it and it's inspiring hope. Um, I'm grateful to God, I'm grateful to this foundation for letting me experience um, something that most people don't get to experience. I'm blessed to see how God is working with um, the staff that works here, how God is working with uh, Carlos Vargas through everything that he does. Um, I'm grateful to God, you know, and I want to be part of this. I'm, I want to be part of something bigger, something greater. And I can't wait to see what God has in store for us. When I arrived this week, I was excited about the impact that I thought I was going to be able to have, but the impact has happened to me. The sense of family and community has been awesome. And then just the love of Christ in the community and how it's transforming these villages has impacted me forever. And it's not about the resources that we can provide as much as it is the support for them to have a job and provide their own resources. So I will forever be impacted from this week. The biggest impact on us has been, we, we thought we had a decent grasp on our humility and our contentment. And we've come to realize that we're not even close. These people are, are so humble and so content with the, the circumstances that they have. One of the other big things that we've seen that's really been cool to see is just three churches coming together without a hiccup the whole week, just helping these people, jumping in, doing whatever needs to be done. We we don't we we may look different and do things different, but we all have the same goal, and that's just showing the people of Guatemala the love of Christ. To be able to do work through God to show Jesus' love has just been amazing. And I'm so thankful and for everyone, uh, for the churches that have come together. We all feel as one. And uh, there's just a peace uh, about this whole trip that's, that's just overwhelming. So thankful.
niño con un plato de comida, cómo se puede hacer la diferencia, porque se puede ver la alegría en el cual ellos eh, reciben y, y eso fue lo que más me gustó, el cómo dan y cómo recibe la gente. Um, coming here to the Hope of Life has been a beautiful experience. We have, I came with a whole group of five, we have experienced the love of people, the passion. We have been able to see how Hope of Life has changed so many lives by giving food to kids, by teaching them, giving them an education, and actually making them prosper in life. It has been an experience that As a person, I will never forget, and I hope I can be able to come back and experience this. Hope of Life exists to fulfill one goal, one mission, to save lives. This mission takes us high in the mountains and deep in the jungles of Guatemala in search of God's most valuable treasure, his little ones. Precious children who are fighting alone against malnutrition, but from the moment we find them, their fight becomes our fight and saving them becomes our top priority. We are living up to the name we hold. We are providing not only medicine, but the help that will make things different. The love their lives are desperately craving for and the hope of a better life. Thank you for fighting alongside us. Thank you for being an important part of what we do. Thank you for writing the story of how we are providing Guatemala and the world with hope of life. This week you helped send 15 from our church. There was 14 from another church and four uh, from another church. And uh, it was absolutely incredible to see 35 people work together. And uh, here's what I would, would like to do. If you were on that team this week, I just want you to stand up, all right? J just go ahead and stand up. If you were in Guatemala and you were serving uh, this week, j just stand up. Look around the room. Absolutely incredible job. I couldn't be more proud to be the pastor uh, of this group uh, than, than any. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. We had some uh, circumstances that you can't count on, that you can't plan for, and everybody just rolled with it, and they adapted, and they did a fantastic job. They represented Harmony well. They represented the kingdom of God uh, in an incredible way, and uh, an incredible impact was made. There are two pictures that I just want to go ahead and, and comment on, on real quick. As this picture is up on the screen, that's what the place looked like on Monday when we arrived, um, and uh, we're, we're thankful for that. Actually, uh, the, the roof was off Monday. That, that picture is showing uh, that, that the roof is on, but other than that, uh, everything uh, looks exactly the same as it did in that picture. Now we're going to go ahead and go to a picture uh, of Thursday. The building was painted, a new roof was put on, uh, the cement is, is taken care of, and, and, and that's absolutely, absolutely incredible. And that's just one aspect of what took place, all right? Just, just one aspect in Monday, Tuesday, and then a little bit of time on Thursday. Uh, Billy Smith is going to go ahead and share just a little bit about what God did in his life uh, this, this past week. Next week, we're going to hear from our entire team, uh, but Billy's just going to go ahead and share a little bit this morning, comment on some photos that he would like you to see. Well, buenos dias. That means good morning. <laughs> I brought this white hat. 
it started out white at the beginning of the week. I just wanted to throw it on. It, it was a long week, and it is no longer white. It was multiple colors. <laughs> so, um, no, it was an awesome week in Guatemala and specifically in Los Canan. Um, and what I said on the video, the impact that it's had on me will, will be a lifelong change. Um, well, the good news is, is John told me, he's like, I need you to talk and in just a couple minutes. And so I thought it was after he was done preaching, so I got a ton of time. I, <laughs> I actually brought some notes. Uh, so uh, settle in. <laughs> No, there's just a couple areas I want to speak specifically to, and I and I alluded to them in the video. But I, I put a couple pictures up here. Um, when I when I think about the week, is selfless service in action. And so we went around the village of Hope of Life, and and this picture is of a gentleman sitting in um, the o oasis of, of of Eden, which is the elder home where they have mental challenges. And so, you know, that was one part of the village. The, uh, the, the camp. There was another part is called Kelly's House. And um, Kelly's House was for the youth who have mental challenges. So they go out and rescue the, the young. And you've seen some of the videos. And then this picture is of the Transformation Village. This um, little boy was part of a family home. They don't do orphanages where they throw everyone in one big building. They do multiple homes and they have family sponsored homes where a, a mom and a dad will raise these orphans up and give them hope to go out and, and be citizens inside that city. Um, and so it was really just, I mean, they go out and rescue these folks that really what, what I refer to is they're the lost generation, the people that we forget about and hope a life is investing in them. And the people that did it had so much joy that was serving in these areas. It's, they're not going to be recognized. They won't even be thanked most of the time. And the love they poured into the, into the um, folks in, in those areas was significant. Then I thought about, you know, just joy and contentment and how my circumstances generally dictate my joy and my contentment. And you can't really see the video here, but these kids are smiling. And there's a couple more, Terry. You just walk through. I just wanted to show you a couple pictures of the happiness and joy they had. Um, and then this this is you, I showed this girl her, her picture the first time. She wasn't smiling. Then I took it the second time, and she was smiling. I showed her, and she was just overwhelmed with it. But this is the circumstance they deal with daily. Go ahead. Those are homes sitting outside of a dump where they burn trash. And if they can have joy and contentment, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, why can't you? Right? It's not about our circumstances. So, um, and then lastly... Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about the sense of community. And this picture is, of, uh, we went out in the village, and we were going to these homes. And this woman, her name is Alicia, she was out front sweeping her yard. It's a dirt yard. She was sweeping it. And the sense of pride she had in her yard and her home, she invited us in right away. First, when we came up, she ran inside, and I thought it's because she saw James, but Obviously, it wasn't. Uh, she, she went in, and she started setting these chairs up. She said, come in, come in, come in. And we sat down with her, and we prayed. And she said, pray for my daughter and my family. My daughter, Alma, she has medical, medical conditions that she's not doing well. But every home we went into, the one common theme was pray for my family. The deep love they have for their families and each other, it was pretty awesome. Um, and the pride. And so that picture was of a picture of the building you already saw. And then this last picture was day one. AJ and I were walking up to the school. And these two boys, you can't see them very well, but they were carrying these large sacks. I thought it was food at first, um, a lot lighter. And we got up on them, and we cooked the bags for them. And this hill, I mean, it was steep, 65, 60-degree 60 angle. Um, and we took the bags. It was 50-pound bags of concrete. They'd already moved like 12 of them. The one boy couldn't have weighed about 35, 40 pounds. He was carrying a 50-pound bag of concrete up this hill. And so the one question I have for you is mothers in this room, who would take their kid out of first grade and not put them back in school? Just remove them, right? You think of that, you're like, no, I wouldn't do that. These mothers are being forced to do that and put their boys out to work. And this is why, because they can go out and work. Now, he was carrying it up to the school. This little first grader, seven-year-old boy was a hard worker. 
he can bring a couple dollars home a week for that family to eat. And so they're, they're, what they're doing is they're stopping a generation from going and getting educated out of necessity. And so I know John will talk a little bit about sponsorship and how we can help break that cycle. Um, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So next week you'll have to come back to hear more about that. Um, but this picture will forever be stuck in my mind because um, it was really the first picture I took of that village in Los Canaan. Um, but I actually we just want to close with saying I have a clearer vision of what John talked about a year ago and how God's laid this village on his heart and how we can impact it for, for, from Harmony's perspective. So you'll hear a lot more about how we can go about doing that here next week. But I just want to leave you with, it was an awesome week, and, uh, and we got a pastor who has a heart for this village and changing the cycle in Los Canaan. Thanks. So to give you a little bit of backstory about myself, for those of you who don't know, oh, now you turn the lights on. Um, so uh, I turn them back off. Yeah, really. exactly. I mean, <laughs> turn these ones off so they can't see me. No, uh, my wife and I, uh, before we were ever in youth ministry, felt like God had wanted us in missions, and so we had surrendered long ago to go to the country of Belize and work in a town called Corazal and work there, and then be kind of circuit riding preachers through Copper Bank and some other villages that were Spanish speaking. So my wife and I went to language school in Costa Rica for a couple months. Uh, got back and then through God shutting doors, it was not us, it was God shutting doors, we were not able to go. So this week, going into this week, my wife being able to go uh, was a lifelong fulfillment or a dream long fulfillment, I should say, of my wife and I being able to work together in a Spanish speaking culture on a mission field. So just starting off, uh, I was pumped, like just to be able to go work alongside my wife and do something that I felt like God had put a desire in our heart to do at 12, 13, 14 years ago, finally being fulfilled was just awesome. So as Billy said, the first day, now John and I had been there last year, so a lot of the, uh, a lot of the pictures that you see, those were still fresh in our mind. You see the dump, that's something that just gets burned into your brain, you don't lose that. And so when we were coming back, most, I think I would say for you as well, more so that stuck in my head this time, and I'm sure those that went on the trip as well, because we were there for a week instead of just a couple days, was the people. Because the buildings, when you first walk up, that's what burns your brain like, that's a school. You know, there's like holes in the roof. They're cooking in one room, and there's no chimney. So the smoke was literally just pouring into the rooms. They would have to evacuate the room, take their desks with them, and go share another room while they were cooking because they couldn't breathe. So, like, you'd walk up, and that's what stuck with you. Well, this week, what stuck with me was especially the children. Now, there's, there's parents, and, and you're looking at them, and they're sacrificing everything. Uh, for their kids or trying to make it so that their kids can get a better life and things like that. But man, what Billy said, uh, as far as when we were going there the first day, he and I were walking up, and I thought, now, this is not to be rude, but Guatemalans aren't tall people, all right? They're, they're smaller. So I'll admit, from afar, I didn't think they were kids. I was like, oh, look, there's some Michigan Guatemalans that are, you know, like, I just, I didn't know that they were, that they were, that they were children, all right? So as we start walking up the hill, and we get closer, and then I started to realize they had school uniforms on, and I, th and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, those are kids. So we went up to them. Billy first got to the first kid and asked him, Necesitas ayuda, uh, do you need help? And so I don't know if Billy said that, but he just looked at him and grabbed the bag and took it off his shoulders. I realized it was like an eight-year-old kid somewhere around there. Now, again, when you're looking at children there, they'll look a lot younger than they may be and stuff. So when I say that age, it may not be right. But he looked about eight years old, so he takes that bag on him. So to carry, and I look up a little bit, and there's this kid up there doing the same thing. So I run up to him and, and ask him, do you need help? And he looked at me, and the face was, it wasn't like a, like, I'm pained in doing this. It was this face of relief, like just to have a weight taken off of his shoulders. Now, here's what I thought was cool this morning. This morning we sang, All My Hope is in Jesus. The name of the organization that's there is Esperanza de Vida, the hope of life. And so when I took that bag off of that kid's shoulders and he looked at me with hope in his eyes of he had now has that burden lifted, what came to mind was not that I'm taking a cement bag off of his shoulders, it's that the gospel would be shared by my wife, who 12, 13, 14 years earlier, we had dreamed about doing ministry together in a Spanish-speaking country. She would share the gospel in Spanish, and those children had the ability to have a much heavier weight taken off their shoulders. 
And when I looked at that kid and he gave me that cement bag, now I am in no way comparing myself to Jesus, so don't even take that. But I thought to myself, how good of a heavenly father do we serve that looks at the trash that we're carrying, the weight, could be 50 pounds, could be 100, some of you feel like you're carrying 300 pounds. And he looks at us and says, I'll take that weight for you because I love you and I care for you. And if there's one thing that is universal, and, and for some of our people, I know Brooklyn may be fluent in Spanish, or so she says, but for most of us that were not fluent in Spanish, there's one universal thing, and that's hope. Everybody has hope that there's something better, that there's something more, and to be able to share that all of our hope is in Jesus, and yours can be too was the greatest experience. And by the way, next week, you will hear, um, you'll hear stories, you'll see videos, you'll hear about children in our village that will be available for sponsorship. You'll hear all of that. You'll have the team that'll be talking about things. Let me encourage you. There is nothing that will, if you have somebody in, the, in your mind, you're like, man, I, I've really been wanting to witness to this person. I've really been wanting to talk to them about Christ. That's my next step, is telling somebody about the gospel. Bring them next Sunday. Because as we talk about Guatemala and how we shared the hope of Christ in Guatemala, there ain't nobody in here that's going to go, well, that's boring. Everybody's going to look and say, man, those people have nothing except Jesus. So I'd encourage you next week, bring somebody with you. Uh, it is going to be a fantastic. I'm looking forward to see what everybody else says from our team. Just in the times that we had talking was fantastic. I mean, just in our group saying, what did you learn? What's a good thing? What's a bad thing? Those types of things was awesome. So I'm looking forward to next week, but here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you to pray, number one, about going. If we go on another missions trip, be the first to sign up, all right? Pray about going. Number two, pray about giving. Not just in the child sponsorship, but if people need to go, you might say, listen, these old weak and feeble knees can't go. Fantastic. Then give money for somebody else to go. So pray about going, pray about giving, and here's the third thing pray about telling someone here about the hope of Jesus. Because hope just isn't in Guatemala. Jesus is not just working in Guatemala being like, well, I guess I'll forget America. Okay, Jesus is working here as well as there. So pray about telling somebody about the hope that's in Jesus. You know, this week was uh, about hope. It was about faith. And we kick off a series entitled Big Faith, and I'm just going to take a couple of minutes this morning to walk down through something that took place in Guatemala, and it can take place right here. You see, what took place in Guatemala was faith in action. It was giving hope away. Whether it was at Kelly's house and hugging one of the children that really don't understand anything, but they're being loved on at that point in time, or whether it was out in the village taking that cement bag and carrying it up a, a, a hill, whether it was the playground equipment that was installed that you didn't get to see, but you'll see next week, and putting the roof on, and, and, and just coming alongside and, and carrying those burdens, whether it was going into someone's home and praying with them and, and sharing Christ, and some of uh, the people that were on that trip praying with someone publicly for their first time, sharing the gospel with them one-on-one -on -one through a translator, what was taking place was faith in action. It was a faith that, that may have been this big, but it was a faith that was stretched to a, a big faith. There's a, a passage of Scripture in, in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 8, and I just, just want to go ahead and, and, and read it quickly, and then I'm going to jump into our text for today. Over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about five things God uses to grow your faith. And, and getting involved in somebody's life, serving them is one of the ways that God grows your faith. I could say this morning without a doubt that Everyone that was on that trip, their, their faith was stretched. Their, their life was impacted because they saw God do something in them and through them that, that changed their life, but it also made an impact on somebody else's life. And sometimes we think that in order for us to serve someone else, we, we have to have this big faith, or we've got to have perfection in our life, but, but God's not looking for perfection. God is just looking for a little bit of faith and trust, and through that faith and trust, he'll take and do incredible things. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 5, it says this, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help, and he said, Lord, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve you to have 
to, to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one to go and he goes and that one to come and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such a great faith. Jesus speaks of the faith as being great. But why did he do that? Why did he say, in the midst of all the people that I've met, I've, I've not experienced or, or witnessed such a, a great faith? It's because of faith, it's because of trust, it's because of relationship. You see, the, this gentleman didn't understand everything about Jesus, but, but he understood there was something unique about him, and he, he understood that, that he believed that Jesus was, was who he said he was. So I want to jump over to a passage of Scripture, because a lot of you would say today, I, I can't go to Guatemala. Well, I want to tell you something. As AJ said, you can pray for people that can go. You can give so that other people can go. But more importantly than that, you can do something that will make a difference. In John chapter 12, there's an incredible story about a woman by the name of Mary. And, and, and Mary does something special for Jesus, something special that she was able to do. And, and just as Mary was able to do something for Christ, I want to tell you something. Today, you can do something for Christ. We celebrate what took place in Guatemala. And next week, we're going to give you an up-close picture of the things that unfolded and took place not only in our life but in the lives of others uh, but i want you to think about something what you can do through personal ministry through serving jesus through serving someone else that'll make a difference and stretch your faith in matthew or in john chapter 12 and verse number one it says this then six days before the passover jesus came to bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of, of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? And given to the poor this he said not because he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the money box and used it to take what was put in it but Jesus said let her alone she has kept this for the day of my burial for the poor you have with you always but me you do not have always when I look at the story of of Mary and I, I look at the story of her putting oil on the, the feet of Jesus and wiping the feet of Jesus with, with her hair and I look at the cost and I look at all of the other things and, and, and I see some things there. I see that her faith was stretched at some point in time and she said, you know what, more than anything I want to take this moment and I want to serve Jesus. I want to take my life right here, right now, and I want to seize the moment, and I want to serve Jesus. It was an incredible thing to stop and look and to see our people serve in multiple ways. To see some people putting together first aid kits because they didn't go to the village with us on, on the first couple of days. They stayed behind, and they did something that was just important. And to see other people leading a VBS and pouring into children. And to see other people carrying concrete or, or, or painting a, a building. And to see some of those things unfold. Do you know what happens in our life? At some point in time, we make a, a personal decision to serve a personal decision to get involved in serving Christ and to get involved in serving others and here's what what happens while, while people are sitting around the table while people are are going about their routine Mary says you know what there, this is an opportunity where I can serve Jesus and she made a personal decision to say in this moment I am going to serve him do you know what we have the opportunity to do we have the opportunity each and every day to make a personal decision to say, I'm going to seek, seek an opportunity to serve Jesus. I'm going to seek an opportunity to serve someone else as I'm serving Jesus. I'm going to seek an opportunity to go ahead and pour my life into them and to, to make a difference for the kingdom of God. You see, one of the things that Mary did, it may, may seem really simple to us, but while other people were eating, while other people were gathering, while they were having their conversations, and they were caught up in the moment, here's what Mary does. Mary makes a personal decision to get caught up serving Jesus. Team that was in Guatemala, 
I just want to ask you to do me one huge favor, and it's not for me, it's for the kingdom of God, it's for Jesus. Stay caught up in the personal decision to serve Jesus. Because all week long, you served him in an absolutely incredible way, and people pulled together. And when I say I couldn't be prouder of our group, I mean it. People experienced things that they didn't count on experiencing. There was some setbacks. There were some things that, that came up, but everybody rallied together, and they said, we're in this for each other, and we're in this for Jesus. What a difference it would make if we, as the body of Christ, functioned like that, 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24-7, however you want to phrase it, to make the personal decision to say, I'm going to serve Jesus. You see, Mary wasn't picking on everybody else and saying, look at me. She wasn't saying, I'm better than you. But in the moment, she caught a glimpse of an opportunity to do something for Christ, and she made that personal decision. And can I tell you something? Jesus didn't ask her. Jesus didn't say, hey, who's going to anoint my feet? Who's going to wash them? Who's going to take care of that? Somebody needs to do that. No. She just took the opportunity to serve Jesus. She served him directly. But the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, when we give a cup of cold water, when we visit the sick, when we go to Guatemala and visit the poor, when we feed somebody, when we go to the prison, when we do something for our neighbor that we're serving Jesus. Because Jesus said, not John, Jesus said, in as much as you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. There's the personal decision. I want to challenge you today to take your next step and make a personal decision to get involved in personal ministry because I promise you this, personal ministry, getting up close and serving someone else will stretch your faith. It will grow your faith. There's a, another thing that, that takes place, and I just want to talk about it re really quick, and, and, and it's this, a, a personal investment. You see, sometimes we, we want to we serve in a personal way, but we don't want it to cost us much. Mary took a, a pound of ointment, a pound. We don't have to be very smart to figure out that a little bit of oil would go a long way, Right? I mean, Jesus had two feet, not 35 or 40, just, just two. And here's what she did. She said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break that bottle open and I'm going to give it all to him. I'm going to give it all to him. You see, sometimes we want to serve Jesus, but we don't want it to cost us that much. We don't, we don't want to make the investment you see, I think that the idea is, is this. Even though it didn't take a pound, she wasn't going to hold anything back. You see, Mary was willing to give her personal best. When, when Judas said, why wasn't it sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? You see, honestly, it, it's, it's hard for us to understand some economy. All week long, this week, we, we lived on bottled water. And can I just tell you, I am thankful that I can walk by the water fountain and get a drink. I'm thankful for that. Thankful for a lot of other basic things in life that, that have changed when I arrived back yesterday afternoon. Do you know a, a bottle of water that's twice as big as what we buy here was less than a dollar there? Kind of amazing. But, but do you realize that when, when Mary went ahead and anointed the feet of Jesus, Judas said, why wasn't this sold for a year's worth of wages? A year's worth of wages. She let it cost her something. And sometimes we want to serve, we want to make a personal investment, but we're afraid of what it's going to cost us. Mary said, I'm, I'm not having any strings attached. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to invest my best. Are you investing your best for Christ? Are you giving him your best through personal ministry? When you get the opportunity to serve someone else, are, are you putting your best? Because that's what he asks for. 
He doesn't ask for perfection. He asks us to be faithful. He asks us to do our best to honor him and to serve him as we're serving others in this world. So there was the personal decision. There was the, the personal investment. If we go just a, a bit further, there was personal humility. She takes a, upon the form of, of a servant. So, so we look at the position of her heart. She has a, a servant's heart. She voluntarily does it. It was a position of honor. She lowered herself. Can I tell you something? Sometimes when we get in the muck and mire of some dirty situations, do you, do you know what happens? It might be messy, but it's worth it. All week long, we, we were in and out of places that we would say it's pretty messy. It's an incredible thing to walk up to someone's house and watch them sweep their dirt floor. And to have them come by after receiving a, a food bag, and common sense tells you they don't bathe like we bathe, but they reach out and they want to give you a big hug. And they want to say thank you. And you hug them. You know what? It might be a little messy. It might be a little uncomfortable. But can I tell you something? It's more than worth it. It's more than worth it. Do you know what Mary did? She, she went down and, 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 and she expressed a position of a servant's heart. She expressed a position of honor. She lowered herself. Because some of us just worry about being first. We worry about occupying a, a position of greatness. And we want to be perceived as significant. Can I tell you something? The, the person that was most significant in serving in John chapter 12 was Mary. And she's down before Jesus and she anoints his feet dirty dusty feet and she gives her very best and holds nothing back and she washes it with her hair and dries it with her hair she says look it's absolute humility I'm humbled before you and I'm willing to get messy I'm willing to let it cost me something how many people right here in our community could we go out and get involved with? Sometimes their life seems messy to us and we step back because we don't know what to do or, or maybe we're a little uncomfortable with the circumstance or situation. Can I tell you something? Get involved and get messy. Get involved in their life and love them and serve them and make a difference while you can. You see, Mary made that personal decision to go ahead and exercise a little bit of an investment and to hold nothing back from Jesus. And she said, I'll do it from a position of humility, a position of a servant's heart, a position of honor. It's really an honor to be able to get our life messy for the one who got real messy for us, right? Think about that for just a moment. He took all of our filth. He took all of our shame. He didn't deserve any of it, but he willingly took it on. How messy are you willing to get for him? It was a position of faith. You see, she just simply believed that Jesus was who he said he was. That's it. Jesus said, let her alone. She's kept this for my burial. She, she believed that, that Jesus was, was who he said he was. She didn't understand everything, but she just believed. What, what would happen if we began to believe that Jesus was who he said he was? And we begin to live that way on, on a daily basis. I can tell you, personal, personal ministry, getting involved in serving someone else while we're serving Jesus will change your life. It will change your faith. It, it can do it in Guatemala, but it can do it in Avon, Indiana, or wherever you happen to be at that point in time. A personal decision, a personal investment, personal humility. How about some personal resolve? Why, why, why is that? Why, why do we need some personal resolve? Because there's always a Judas. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He was critical because he had no compassion. 
He was critical because he had no concern except for himself. Why does it take personal resolve? Because people will, will say, why are you doing that? If you think I didn't have some friends in ministry saying, why are you going to, to Guatemala with that group? Or, or why are you going to, to do that? You, you could do something else. Do, do, do you know what? Uh, that, that happened to, to Mary when she was anointing the feet of Jesus. If people are going to criticize someone for directly serving the Savior that they see in front of them, guess what? They're going to be critical of your personal ministry as well. But do you know what Mary said? As far as we know, she said nothing. She just kept on serving. And sometimes we're tempted to respond and, and say, man, I've got to respond to that critic, and I've got to tell him why, and I've got to tell him why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and here's what Mary said, as far as we know, nothing. Do you know what she did? She let her, her service speak for itself. And while Judas was critical, Jesus gave approval. And do you know why Jesus gave approval? Because Jesus understood her heart. Jesus understood her motive. When our heart's right and our motive is right, guess what? Jesus takes care of it. And sometimes serving others is a little messy. Sometimes serving others involves a little criticism. Sometimes serving others is not necessarily what we expected. But Jesus gives his approval when we're serving in his name personal ministry will stretch your faith take a step and get connected take a step and serve someone why because it's a personal opportunity that we may not have very long it's a personal opportunity you see if Mary would have said you know what I'm going to wait till the next time we get together. She'd have missed the opportunity. If some of you think, I'll start serving next year. I'll get involved in personal ministry next year. I'll work with the children some other time. I'll share my faith some other time. And I'll, I'll go ahead and, and do something for Jesus down the road. I want to tell you something. When you read John chapter 13 and 14 and 15 and 16, you, you begin to understand if Mary would have waited, she would have missed the opportunity. And some of us are waiting to get engaged in personal ministry because we think we need to get our life together first. We think we need to learn a little bit more first. We think we need to get a little better first. And, and here's the bottom line. Mary said, I need to seize the opportunity while I can. Jesus said, look, you're always going to be able to do something for the poor. Well, what he was saying is this, not that I don't care about the poor, not that you shouldn't serve the poor. Here's what he was saying. You can always take action to do something that you're not passionate about or you don't really care about because he understood that Judas didn't care. But he said, when you want to serve me and you want to do it in my name, when you pass by an opportunity, it's a missed opportunity. Don't let another opportunity pass you by. Mary said today, this moment, is an opportunity to serve Jesus. And that's what I'm going to do. Team that was in Guatemala, you had an incredible opportunity. Don't quit serving now. Because there's an opportunity today, there's an opportunity tomorrow, there's going to be an opportunity the day after that. For all of us, there's a personal opportunity continually. It's how we see it. So let's make a personal decision to say, Jesus served me by giving his life. I want to go ahead and serve him by giving my life. I want to make that personal decision. I want to make that personal decision investment. I want to practice personal humility. It doesn't have to be about me. I don't have to have the big chair. I don't have to, to lead the group. I, I, I don't have to, to be the, the one that, that is necessarily out front and has the easy conversation. I'll take, I'll take the lowly place and I'll serve. I'll get messy. I'll get dirty. I'm going to do it with humility. I'm going to go ahead and have some personal resolve because people will criticize. But here's Here's the bottom line. I'm not going to let a personal opportunity pass me by because I want to serve Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father, we come to you today and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the things that you've done this week in your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for 
the households that were were impacted this past week in Guatemala. But Father, I'm asking you to let that impact continue on and begin to spread out. And, and Father, I'm asking you that you would help us to realize that what, what was done in Guatemala can be done here. We can hug children here. We can pour into them here. We can go ahead and make an investment. As we poured out our best there, we can pour it out here individually and as a church. As we gave away food, as we gave away hygiene items, we can do that type of thing right here in America. As we came alongside strangers and shared our faith and said, how can we pray for you? And we broke through a language barrier. And we prayed for them. And we saw people cry. God, help us to know that the same need is right here. Not just on American soil, but right here in our community. Father, I pray that you would help us to consider personal ministry because that's what took place this past week in Guatemala was each one personally doing what they could do in a given moment. Father, I pray that you would help us to catch that as a church and for people today to say, okay, how can I personally serve others while I'm serving you, Jesus? What can I do? And I pray that you'll help us to take our next step. With heads bowed and eyes closed, right here, right now, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? You see, Jesus' personal ministry to you and me for the world was that he came, he lived a perfect life, he went to the cross, and he became your sin, and he became my sin so that we could know him. Today, are you certain that you know him? Are you 100% positive that Jesus is your Savior? If you're not 100% positive that He is your Savior, here's what I would love for you to do today. In a moment when we stand and sing, if you know the words, you can sing along, but most importantly, if you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you to make your way to the aisle that you're closest to. I want you just to come right, right down in, in the front, and, and we... We'll take the Bible and show you how you can know for certain that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Maybe you're here today and you say, I know Christ is my Savior, but quite honestly, John, you've been talking about personal ministry. You've been talking about making an investment in, in somebody else's life and serving Jesus while I'm serving them. And today, I want to do that. I, I want to make a personal decision to take the opportunities to serve others and, and to give God my very best and to hold nothing back, to do it from a place of humility. If that's you today, and you want to come and pray around the altar, or you want to pray right where you are and say, God, help me to take that next step, then I want you to do that. Maybe you've got some things to pray about, God's direction and God's guidance. Well, whatever it might be, just let God speak to your heart and you respond to him. If it's to come forward, that's great. If it's to, to stay right where you are and to pray about that where you are, we, we certainly respect that as well. So would you stand with me, please, and just respond to God as he leads you.
a detachable portion at the bottom. If you're a first-time guest, we thank you for being here. Please bring it out to the Connection Center uh, when we leave today. We'd love the opportunity to send home a gift with you and learn a little bit more about what's going on in your life, how we can serve you, because we truly do want to serve you. If you need uh, prayer, please fill that out and uh, drop that in the offering plate when it comes by, and we would love the opportunity to be able to pray with and for you. But let's go ahead and, and uh, ask uh, the blessing on the offering today. And Mike Stevenson, would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. As they are receiving our offering, I want to remind you that uh, Awana is in swing tonight, 545. Moms and dads, uh, please go ahead and have your children here a little bit early. Get them connected. Over in Founders Chapel, we've got a Bible study uh, that's taking place, and we are uh, looking at the end times, and uh, Dave Anderson is going to be leading uh, that Bible study uh, this evening, and uh, I'll be here sharing some things uh, about Guatemala and, and that service as well. Uh, so I want to encourage you to come back, uh, be a part of that. Also, uh, 412 is uh, taking place, and, and just want to encourage uh, all of you to come and, and be uh, in a place where you can serve and uh, be connected. Uh, we are talking about next steps, and uh, maybe you're here today, and uh, you know your next step is uh, membership here at Harmony. We have a class that's coming up on March the 15th, and you can share that uh, information with us, your connection card, and, and uh, if you've already put in your connection card uh, and you want to be a part of that class, just come on back to uh, the Connection Center, and we will get you taken care of uh, immediately following uh, the, the service uh, today. I um, want to encourage you uh, to uh, be a part of the different opportunities that are here uh, on uh, the worship guide in, in a way to be connected and worship. If you're not a part of a life group, a life group is a uh, small group Bible study, and uh, it, it's an opportunity uh, to grow your relationship with Christ and to grow your relationship with others, and I just want to encourage you uh, to get connected and be a part of a life group, uh, and there is information in the back as to how uh, you can do that and how you can be a part of a life group and, and make a difference in your personal faith and in the faith of others. I want to thank all of you for gathering with us today. It is good to have Charlie and Cindy McClellan uh, home with us. And uh, are you home because you sold your house and you're closing? All right. And you're just moving from one side of Prestwick a little closer to the church, right? You're not certain at this point. All right. You're, you're homeless. All right. So... I think that's the, wow, you, you, you gave people homes in Guatemala and you served them. Could you do something for us? Is, is that what it is? <laughs> Pray for the McClellans that uh, God would uh, bless them and uh, take care of them and keep them right here in Avon where they belong. All right. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I think that they have a heart to go to Florida um, and, and then they have a heart to be here. So they need a, a happy medium. All, all right. So, so let's pray for them uh, about that. Well, we're going to stand and we are going to be dismissed in prayer. I want to thank you for being here today. Pray for one another as you go throughout your week. And again, I, I know some of you are probably going to say, wow, well, you've said this multiple times, but our team in Guatemala was awesome. They rallied together and took care of each other. And they, they did some absolutely incredible things. And let's give them one more round of applause. And uh, I, I, I got a text that said, how come we don't see you in any of the pictures? And I just want to make note, AJ wasn't in any of the pictures either. Um, he and I uh, just stayed behind at the campus and enjoyed all the amenities uh, of, of Guatemalan life in a, in a village that uh, doesn't. Uh, we had been there and done everything that we they were videoing. So we let our people serve. So we were there, I promise. And we did paint. And we did carry the medal, and we did all of those things. Uh, that, that was the, the dirty work. Um, but uh, we had a, an awesome time, and uh, thank you for your support in that. Matt Roller, it is good to have you in our service today. He is a pastor, Indianapolis Baptist Temple. Would you close us in prayer, please?